who is behind Indiana Jones. Oh, I'm a skater, man. Look, radical skater, man. Yeah, man, look. Radical skater, man. Radical skater, man. I'm the right man. Radical Hi, Dean. Hi, Dean. Hi, Dean. All right. Okay. Good life. Not too bad. You're getting on with my book. Oh, I Did you read it or you just stick it on the shelf? I haven't had a chance yet. Got so many books to go I'm sure, I'm sure yeah. I have one of these got now. I was going to get my leather. Hey, uh, I would like to ask yeah. you some questions about some hadiths that I came with. Uh, actually, I would like to ask you some questions because the last time you did, now it's my turn, right? Um, um, how about that's we do fair, fair. Well, well, questions backwards and forwards? So I can ask you some, you can ask that me some. Confusing. So one for one. Yeah, that gets confusing. You ask no, you one topic because you because just one topic. Freestyle. And we only did on that topic last time. Do, 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 do. So we do this time on the topic that I choose. And I think that'll be good. I think that's let's, fair. Let's get ready and then uh, yeah, sure. once well, he's ready, then well, we can... I, I'm not agreeing to this. I'm not agreeing to oh, this. Well, you, to you, I, I, you don't have to agree. I, 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 I'm happy to do question for question. Hit that like button. Yeah, but you usually do question and question, question normally. Only. Like the last time you brought up to the three, five question. No, 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 no. Normally question. it's just question, question. Stuck to that topic. We did. Question and I think it's only fair you question is just fair. basically return that courtesy. Fair enough. Go yeah. on, choose your topic. Yeah. Yeah. topic. I have no idea. Uh, what is the topic? Uh, let me think hey. about it. I want to think about it. I didn't plan this conversation. You know the animals? Like I said, I don't know the animals. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I didn't plan the topic. It's just that you came across, so I thought... I'm sure I, it's I, a topic I, that you have been planning. No, no, you just no. didn't know you were going to talk Honestly, to me about it. I didn't even know you were coming. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm sure it was I didn't a topic know you were going to speak you know to people about today. Yeah, you know that important, bro. What is the topic? Let me think about it. Let me think. Yo, yo. Is there any topic you would rather not discuss? I, I, I'm happy to try and talk about any topic if I know it. If I don't know it, then I, I won't talk about it. <laughs> At least it's honest. <laughs> the, only, the, only, the only one that's doing smoke is you, mate. And it's no, not no. Any good. We like Turning that brain of yours into Swiss yeah, cheese. We, we like to keep the speaker's corner mode where we do cross questioning rather than the five minute five minute yeah i know five minutes. is that okay with you bob so so in in terms of what what, what are you suggesting as the format you talk you talk and all that's it, bob. then you see everyone else in speaker's corner that's, that's usually chaos man to it's be not fair. chaos no it's if it was chaos. chaos you wouldn't be coming every week let, let, let's let's <laughs> let's just go well, all right what, what's the what's the topic that you want him to talk about hold on a second let's just sit up mate Let's see, what should I talk about? Think about it while I do this. Here, hold this hand. That one did you talk about? What's happened you know to your big camera? You know that's going to get oh, empty. You don't. I suppose when they let new phones, you don't need them, do you? Free help means the elite hate you, despise you, and do not want you to be a healthy, I'm eating my polo. <laughs> Give the guy a chance, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, that was I'm staying up. I'm staying up. That's what he's waiting for. You're live. No, no, it's me. It's me. Oh, don't you, look yeah. you don't look tired. Uh, you don't look tired. You don't look tired. You don't look tired. Thank you. I always let it flow. What are you talking about? I, I assess my sleeping pattern based upon your commentary <laughs> from week to week. Show the Chris here. He's the most Bob the Builder. Thank you. We've got JC here with the Crazy you cannot up. operate yeah. as an old human <laughs> being. When you're it's like something from it's like a Frankenstein version of a camera, isn't it? <laughs> Every time it turns, it just gets another part. He goes in a little bit. He got good stamina on his hand. JC, how are you? How are you? Because the cost of films will mean you've been dead forever. Hopefully, brother Bob is going to do a couple of Hadoukens today, and I've been about pro you can knock out. You've been waiting for those for a few months now, haven't you? This is going to be really disappointing if you pick a topic that I don't know anything about. But those are the rules. Don't worry about it. I'll give you a topic you know when something about. Just profit from from health, health, when people How you doing, buddy? How you doing? You all right? Pharmaceutical companies. Is that profit from medicine? Yeah. 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 Yes, I would look forward to praying for you one time, brother. You need, you need to get free of those drugs, man. Really. You need to be free of those drugs. Bob! 
five Wait, minutes okay. just to get the camera out, please. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Bob says okay. Five minutes, five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You're already running out of five minutes, bro. I'll be All gone right, soon, start, you know that. We'll start recording when oh, it's uh, there. Start that again. <laughs> what do you mean, again? It's not like it's not expected. I'm going to run. I'm going to go. <laughs> don't do that, bro. <laughs> no, don't, I'm not. I'm not. Hey, Elias. I think we got a little hive in there. So, so what's the topic? Uh, Trinity? Would you like that, yeah? <laughs> Would you like that? Oh, that's not a bad idea, actually. What, Trinity Part 2? Well, if Bob likes Trinity, I don't mind. Well, I'm just thinking that's usually your go-to your go-to uh, debate and discussion. What's so, important? you know, some some um, friends of yours they yeah. said that uh, the discussion we had last time on yeah. Trinity. Yeah. Bob answered your question about the Trinity. Yeah. Do you really feel that you answered the question that I asked you? My question was very specific. Where in the Bible did anyone advocate a triune being, a triune God? Yeah. The worship. Do you yeah. really feel that you have answered that solely from the Bible? Yeah. Or did you have to go? Up well, no, I, I, I was talking about the concept of a trinity as a historical doctrine. And within that, I referenced how the church fathers used the Bible, the New Testament and the Old to come to the conclusion of the doctrine of the trinity. And then I went on to explain that in the formation, in the canonical uh, philosophical declaration that was given at Nicaea, that that encapsulates what is found in the entirety of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Right. So which uh, which church father are you referring to from the first, second century, for example, who believed in the kind of Trinitarian belief that you hold on to? Well, the, the fullest expositor of, uh, of Trinitarian doctrine would be Tertullian. That was in the second century. And he believed in the Trinity like you do? In, in so far that he described it, yes, he's referenced by later church fathers, he's accepted by the churches uh, as someone who declares the Trinity. There are corrections to his statements made by later church fathers because... Tertullian, was he the one who coined the term Trinity? No, no he wasn't, it was coined much earlier. Who coined it? I can't remember. The word Trinity? The word Trinity was coined by a different church father who came before Tertullian. Wasn't Tertullian um, basically condemned as a heretic? Uh, later. For what? I can't remember. Come on, I thought no, you were, no, no, you wait, were the expert wait, wait, in the church wait, wait, fathers. He, um, I'm the one not. Wait, wait, he, he, if I remember, he joined, um, he, was, he was kind of like a, a second century Puritan. And I think he struggled with uh, the lapses within the church and the idea that the church was willing to take back lapses. And so he what exactly was he a heretic for? He, well, if I'm, if I'm remembering my history correctly, yeah. he ended up joining a group that refused to accept the reaffirmation of lapsy into the church that had a sort of puritanical understanding of the faith. And this group, I think they were not, not Marcians, I can't remember their name. Um, he ended up founding his own group in the end, called the group that ended up becoming known as the Tertullians. No, but that, there must be something, his ideology must be different, to form a separate group from the church. On the top of, off the top of my head, I can't remember okay, what that from, is, but you're right, there will be. If you, if you remember anything about the, the kind of trees, if, if I remember, I will, I will bring it up. Fair enough. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if you can actually perhaps enlighten us about the kind of Trinity, Trinitarian belief that he advocated or he believed in, that would really help. Well, in so far, in so far that many of his statements were accepted as give us by, by example. Like, well, he, he talked. To, he talked yeah. about three hypostases. He talked about the the, the idea of the single oesis. Um, there were elements where he went beyond the bounds of what was accepted as canonical. Like, I, honestly, you're, you're asking me. We, as you know, we agreed this topic ad hoc. Off the spot. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's how I, you so, came across. Say absolutely. Time. So, so <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I don't, okay. I don't remember specifically. So, all right. So any but other? I can pull up. I can pull up yeah. some of his statements on the Trinity. Yeah, sure. If you just bear that, with us. That'll help. Yeah. So we got Tertullian so far. Yeah. And um, I'd be very surprised if he believed the kind of Trinity that the Christians hold on to today. Have you got uh, an example? Uh, could you, could you evidence this? This? No, assertion? that's what I want to know. It's not an assertion. I'm asking a question. I'm saying. Yeah something from the first century yep. church fathers something from the second century church fathers that believed in the kind of trinity that was established in the fourth century yeah and later on is there any church father that you can quote who believed in such a trinitarian belief that would really help yeah well i mean it's not a statement or assumption i'm making i think, I'm asking I think your we question. i think we i think we have to be clear about how we understand and interpret the church fathers yeah. The church fathers were speaking within a historical context, dealing with the concerns of their time. 
And for many of them, the, the Trinity was the backdrop to their beliefs. If something is the backdrop to your beliefs, if you're writing to someone who already knows a, a great number of things, you don't go to the point of expositioning what those things are because you're assuming that your reader already knows them. No, but if and that's quite normal. If something is quite significant for the salvation of the people and they do not talk about it or they talk something contrary to what has been established by the churches as being the Trinitarian belief. Mm -hmm. If something is quite significant for your salvation, should it not be discussed as a primary thing? For example, for the Muslims, the Tawheed is quite important. Yep. Yes? Yep. And you'll find throughout history from the first century onwards, Al Hijra, to all the way to, till until today. They will talk about Tawheed as being the primary thing that a Muslim needs to do. So when someone converts to Islam, the first thing that they have to declare is what? The Shahada. Mm -hmm. What is the Shahada? Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. That I declare that there is only one, that, that Allah is the only one God. Washhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. And I declare that Muhammad is his messenger and his Rasul. So you see, this is quite a fundamental belief in Islam. Without the Shahada, you wouldn't even become a Muslim. The very first thing to become a Muslim is to make this declaration of faith. Can you show me that declaration in the Quran? The declaration in the Quran? Yeah. What? Saying uh, to believe in one yeah, God? So show me in the Quran where it says that to become a Muslim, you have to say the Shahada with this declaration, please. No, no, I think I, think I missed the point here. No, no, hold on. What you, did I say? No, you started okay, this conversation. Yeah, you started okay. this conversation saying that the Trinity, your, your, your assertion uh, in our previous debate, and again in this one, yeah. is that the Trinity is not clearly exposited in the Bible in a singular verse, okay. clearly. So show me in the Quran, where it, says, in the Quran? It's where it says what? that you declare that there's one God and that Muhammad is the prophet of God to become a Muslim. Show me where it says that. Okay. By the way, I've always told him, I don't want the word Trinity. I don't want something like that. I want the concept of Trinity. What is the concept of Trinity? That there are three beings, and these three, sorry, there are three persons, hypostasis, whatever you call it, and these three are one. This is the concept I was looking for. Yeah. You want to see the concept of the Shahada, sorry, of the oneness of Allah? No, I want to see, what I want to see is a statement in the Quran that says to become a Muslim, you have to say that there's one God and you say that Muhammad is the prophet of God to become a Muslim. Where does it command that? Where does it state that? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Okay, okay, so show me. So you're yeah. saying you want to see the exact words. Yeah. So when the Muslims ask, where does Jesus say, I am God? Yeah. What do they tell us? We don't have the exact statement, but we have something similar where other people called him God. But here Allah says himself that he's one and he says Muhammad is his Rasul yes. several times in the Quran. Is that not good enough for you, Bob? So, you want to see the exact so what you're doing? So what you're doing, what is, doing? So what you're doing is you're, you're constructing from different verses in the Quran your Shahada. No, it's one word. So it's a secondary It's one word. I'll show you one word. So show me. Show no me one word. I'll show you one word. I want to see it. Yes, yes. Because I think it's important the, the Islamic Dawah team always be held to the same standard of evidence that they demand of the Christians. You're making a small yeah. man. Chris. Exactly. Not really. He is indeed. Not really. Because you see, what I want to see is... Notice, the, notice the heckling concept. by the Islamic Dawah team. It's always the same. You're making another is small every always Muslim the part of the Islamic Dawah always team? The same. By the way, who's the Islamic so. Dawah team? As far as you're concerned. You are, he is, he is. And who <laughs> Most of the people. <laughs> and, and no, no, I pointed to three people Everyone so far. Is. So who? The people that who are here calls? regularly. The people that are here regularly to give Dawah. That are here to give Dawah. Yeah. This is the Islamic Dawah team and, and they call, operate us, they operate by Islamic they Dawah. operate by a completely yeah, double standard. Yeah. Really? They have a standard of evidence that their own faith cannot pass. Yeah. That's true. And I've tested this on numerous occasions. Which is what? The the thing that you have to test the Muslims is if they believe in one God and Muhammad is his Rasul. This, is that in the Quran? So yes, definitely. Your, your, your test you is, is? Your, so by his logic, the test is: Do Christians believe in one God? That is three persons, and we do. What is the three persons so, in the Bible? So, that is exactly what I, the three persons are one. By the way, it's not just three persons. Last time, also you attempted to do this. Remember the sushi bit, which I thought was kind of fishy, <laughs> which you said I'm showing, giving it to you like sushi. What you attempted to do it was you showed in one in one verse you yes. show maybe Jesus was mentioned yes. as God, another verse where the Holy Ghost was mentioned as God, yes. and the third verse maybe where the Father was mentioned as God. Are you saying that you, the Holy Spirit well, wasn't mentioned as God? Let me finish, Bob. Calm down. Okay. All right. Carry on. Give you this. Yeah, this, this is more than the sushi you can take, and I'll right. tr trust me. Today you get a this is what I'm telling. <laughs> <You're gonna get laughs> what you need you to show us is not that. Is that all right? Yeah. That's yeah. What you have to show us is not that individually. They are referenced as gods yep. or God yep. because that would be poly, uh, tritheism. What we want to see is that these three entities 
are one being. If you, can, if you can demonstrate that from a verse in the Bible, then that will be good. But if you cannot, then show us from anywhere I, in the I'm Bible sorry, in Hashim, multiple verses. Hashim, I actually, actually, Hashim, I yeah. don't have to jump through your hoops. You don't have to. I don't have to jump through your you don't hoops. Have to. Neither do I. All I have to demonstrate yes, is that the, the, yes, the Christian scriptures teach that there is only one God and that only one God should be worshipped and that there is no other God. Thank you. And that if that is true, when it also declares that the Father is God, that the Son is God, and that the Holy Spirit is God, Omni then God I have demonstrated Omni that God. that is one God. How is that one God? Person. He just yeah. said the Father is God, the yes. Holy Spirit is God, yes. and the Son is God. So you say If these three are God, yeah. each one of them, are they each individually fully God? Yes. So Father is fully God, yes. and the Holy Spirit is fully yes. God, and the Son is fully God. Yes. How many fully Gods are there? So. Here's, I'm going to answer I'm gonna, the question. I'm, I'm, I will, I will. I will answer the question by just demonstrating by the, way, the no hypocrisy of Hashim's to, logic. Go on, go on, if I have a Hafs Quran, a Wash Quran, and a Duri Quran, yeah. do I have three Qurans or do I have one Quran? You've got answer. three different... Answer. Thank you. Three I'll different, answer, answer. You've got three, three different, different Qurans with three different recitations. Okay. Okay. That's so, he's saying, so he's saying <laughs> that when, when Christians three. point out yes. that we have a Hafs Quran, a Wash Quran, and a Duri Quran, you're admitting that we have three different Qurans. No, you did not hear. Let me repeat again. Three, no, go three on, recitations, the Qirat. You know what the uh -huh. Qirat are? Uh -huh. The three different Qirat of the Quran. So, now wait, 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 so wait. I haven't finished my answer. I haven't finished my answer. The illogical, Calm down. The illogical stance okay. that you have, Hashim, is that you're saying that you can have plurality and unity when talking about the Quran, I didn't say but that. Christians cannot have plurality and unity when talking about God. First, first and foremost, wait, 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 bro, bro. First and foremost, I did not say we had three Qurans. You didn't? No, I did not. I think everyone I said, heard you say that. I think that, everyone yes. who heard me, they would have heard Maybe we'll get a clip where we just repeat back to what you said. Yes, yes. Soko, make sure you, he sees it. Make sure he sees the three Qurans I mentioned. Yeah. Okay, not the three Qurans. Bob, make sure you go home and see that. Because right now he's desperate to put this on the Quran. The Quran itself is not someone who claims that he's God. But Jesus, according to them, claims yeah. he's God. Yeah. The Holy Spirit, according to them, claims he's God. The Father, according to them, claims he's God. Does the Quran claim to be God? Absolutely not. The Quran is a speech of Allah. And the speech of Allah is an attribute of Allah. The attribute of Allah, the attributes of Allah are eternal. I know you want to come and bring up all this details about the different attributes of Allah being eternal and the Quran being eternal. Yes, the Quran is not created and neither does the Quran ever claim that he's a God. But does the son claim he's a God according to them? Does the father claim he's a God according to them? Does the Holy Spirit claim he's a God according to them? Did they jointly ever claim that they are one being? That is what you need to prove to us, Bob. Okay, so so Hashim is working to a completely double standard. Yeah. Oh. He is trying to say that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, each being fully God, is three gods because that's not one, that's three. But when we have a half sawash and a duri Quran, somehow that is one Quran, not three Qurans. This is the kind of illogic that the Islamic Dawah team use Actually, all no, the time. Now, it gets, it gets a little worse. Bro, Notice bro, bro. the heckling from the Islamic Dawah team. It's too English. It's too English. Brother, brother. Always we interrupting we can because they can we never, can ever, ever yeah. allow a debate. Soko, you keep just... quiet as well. So, it gets worse because in the Hadith, in Sahih al-Muslim 804, narrated by Abu Umar, Al ba Bahili, forgive me if I'm slaughtering the Arabic. I heard the Messenger of Allah, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, read, say, read the Quran, for it will come on the day of resurrection, interceding for its companions. Yeah. Now, if this is an eternal attribute of Allah, if this is an eternal attribute of Allah, and it comes to give intercession for its companions on the day of resurrection, this is shirk because the oh. one interceding cannot be no, no, the same no, no. as the one to whom it is interceding. No, okay. First of all, shirk is a first, first and foremost, you need to realize that if someone inter intercedes on their behalf, they don't become that, that person on whose behalf they're interceding. All right? I agree. Okay, so you need to realize this. For example, we see, we see many things in the Bible. For example, we see the serpent speaking in, in Genesis. Yes, the serpent is a creation of God. And the serpent used to be one of the angels, according to your belief, right? One of the greatest angels. And these angels 
In the Bible, certain angels are called gods even. Are they not? Yes. Bob, yes. yes, yes. So angels are called gods. There are certain judges in the Bible called gods, which Jesus pointed to in John 10, 34 very clearly. Yes. Do they become God Almighty? No, they do not. So why do you use these double standards with the Quran when the Quran is interceding? The Quran doesn't, like I said, the Quran never declares itself to be God. So you cannot say the Quran is God. The Quran is, for example, the Musaf which you're holding. So if you read the Quran from your smartphone or you read it from a book, that is actually the Musaf or the Quran, which is the speech of Allah represented as letters and text. It, so for you as a human being, you can narrate it. You can read it and you can actually benefit from it. Allow me to reply. No. You, what, you've, what you have just done is compare this hadith where it says that the Quran will intercede for the companions to something that was created. He made the comparison between my reference to this hadith and the fact that the, the, the serpent spoke to God or that the angels intercede towards God. He compared the Quran, which he said was uncreated, to a created thing. Now that is shirk, because you don't compare the Taweed, the oneness of Allah and all of his attributes to things that are created. The fact of the matter is, if the Hadiths are saying that the Quran intercedes for the companions on the Day of Judgment, then that means the Quran stands between the one who, for whom it is interceding and Allah. Which means that the attribute of Allah is having a conversation with Allah. That is what. That is. It is not. Then, not then you need to. You need to. Hold on. Notice the heckling. Notice the heckling. Information, mate. Notice the heckling. So let's just read. In Imam Ahmed six five eight nine, narrated by Abdullah ibn Amr. Again, apologies if I'm slaughtering the Arabic. May Allah be pleased with him that the Messenger of Allah, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, said, Fasting and the Quran will intercede for a person on the day of resurrection. Fasting will say, O Lord, I kept him from his food and desires during the day. Let me intercede for him. And the Quran will say, I kept him from sleeping during the night. Let me intercede for him. And they will be allowed to intercede. Now, who is the this hadith? Okay. Hashim. Now you said that I compare the Quran to other things. First and foremost, in order for you to understand from a similar perspective in the Bible, I give the example of the sermon. serpent. I did not compare the Quran to the serpent. So your understanding of what I'm saying somehow is lacking here. YouTubers you, can decide. You, of course they can and they can decide whether it's a three Qurans or three Kirats. Maybe you should go home and read that as well and, and watch it again. So what I'm saying is here, the, you see the Prophet ﷺ is going to intercede on your behalf. All right? It's, uh, sorry, he's going to intercede for you. The, the, like you said, the, the, your fasting, the Quran and the other good deeds you have done, these will intercede for you. It doesn't mean that they are God. The point I was referring to earlier with regards to the Trinity is this. Each member of the Trinity claims that they are God. Did the Quran ever claim it is God? Does the Quran have a soul? Does the Quran have the ability to speak on its own behalf unless and until Allah gives it the ability? Like, like, like for example, Allah gives a stone the ability to speak if he wants to. Yes, in the end times prophecies. Allah gives the ability to trees if he wants to wants them to speak. Just like in the Bible, a serpent was given the ability to speak. Right? Might be an angel, I don't know. Angels coming as serpents in the Bible. That's a different issue. But you see, one thing is clear. If Allah gives something the ability to do something, then they will do it. Doesn't make them necessarily God. Just like Jesus, when he says, I go to my father and your father, my God and your God. When Jesus, when he was on earth, he was fully man and fully God according to your belief, Bob. Yes? Does he have the fullness of divinity in him when he said these words, I go to my God? Yes, he had according to your belief. Because post coronation, he is now both man and divine. You cannot just say that he was, it was his humanity speaking. Then you would be committing a heresy by separating his divinity and humanity. Keep it together like you say in, the, in, your, in your creeds. Do not separate them. So while not separating them, this entity, the second person of Trinity, what did he say, Bob? He said that he's going to his God. Yes? Last time you actually did not answer that question. You said that, am I asking as in the form of 
a man or it's as a, as a hypostasis or as as something else. I, I forget exactly what the words. I don't want to put my words in your mouth. But I want you to respond that, to that point. Why did Jesus, being fully God, claim that he has a God? Okay, so I noticed that Hashim didn't actually answer my question. I did. And my question was, to whom was the Quran speaking? The Quran is speaking to Allah. Now, Orthodox huh? Sunni Sorry? Islam, the Quran is speaking to Allah. These are your hadiths. If you're embarrassed by them, perhaps you should reconsider your religion. Now, notice the Go back to school. by the Islamic Dawah team, the Muslims. When I'm speaking, they start heckling. When Hashim's speaking, they're all very quiet. Unfortunately, this is how the Islamic Dawah team operates in Speaker's Corner. So, I will continue, Hashim. Please do, yeah. Will continue now the fact of the matter is the hadiths are really clear and I'm giving you references the Quran is talking to Allah and Sunni Orthodox Islam describes the Quran as an attribute of Allah it is his divine word it is a, it is one of the parts of his foreknowledge this is why it is considered to be eternal but here what we have in the hadiths is that this attribute of Allah is taking on the form of a person and then it is speaking to Allah on behalf of the companions of the Quran. This is what the hadiths are saying and this is shirk. It compromises Taweed because one of the attributes of Allah has separated itself from Allah and he's now talking to Allah. Now, I cannot take lectures from the Islamic Dawah team when they have this kind of contradiction in their doctrine about the son speaking to the father. In our debate, Hashim, unfortunately, you remembered it wrong. I did answer your question. I answered your question by correcting your question because your question was malformed. It wasn't based on any learning. It was simplistic. It was childish. It was uneducated. When you say that Christ, the Son, spoke to the Father saying, I go to my Father and your Father, my God and your God, I said, in what sense are you asking the question, can God have a God? Are you talking in the sense of the hypostasis or are you talking in the sense of the oasis? And I said to you, and you didn't remember, that in the sense of the hypostasis, the person, yes, the son can have a God in the father. But no, not in the oasis, because that would mean two gods. You didn't listen then, you're not listening now. You do this every single week with every Christian you meet, because you come with a little script and you don't deviate from the script. You don't add to your learning and you don't develop your knowledge. Take on board what is being said to you. Someone's microphone fell off. Yeah. Let me stick it yeah. correctly for you so we can. Yeah. yeah. Maybe a touch it there. So take on board what is being said to you and engage with it rather than simply repeating parrot fashion what you keep saying every week at Speaker's Corner. Hold on. Can I respond to that? I, I would just want you to respond to this hadith. I think you have, you have already made a lot of points. Ibn Habban so narrated in his Sahih Bob, Bob, 124 Jabir that the Prophet, blessing and peace of Allah be upon him, said, The Quran is an yes, intercessor <laughs> whose intercession will be accepted and an opponent whose testimony will be accepted. Whoever puts it in front of him, it will be led him to paradise. And whoever puts it behind his back, it will drive him to hell. Who is the Quran an intercessor towards? Okay, first and foremost, I would like to remind you, Bob, this is a topic that I have chosen. Yes? <laughs> wait, wait. Go Remember last time you brought up Surah 355? Did I deviate from the topic? No. No. And I would expect the same courtesy from you. Because what you have done now is that when we were talking about the Trinity, you have brought in about the Quran interceding. I already told you Allah gave permission to the Quran to talk. Allah is not like his speech became the Quran and started to speak over that. It is like, for example, the Mus'haf. The Mus'haf today is something that man has created in the form of a paper and ink. And this is the Mus'haf. Is this a creation? Yes, it, that is a creation. But the actual content within that is what? It is the speech of Allah, which is not the creation of Allah, which is eternal. You somehow do not seem to 
go beyond this understanding because you you want to juxtapose the understanding of God becoming and uh, incarnating as a man and he's still fully God. You know, you brought up this example about the hypostasis and Onassis. Yes? Oasis. You, Oasis. Oasis. The Oasis is the essence. Am I right? Yes. Yes. And the person... Hypostasis. Hypostasis. Yes. Does a person have essence? Every person has essence. Okay. So when Jesus had that essence, what was it? Divine During the earth? It was divine. divine. So divine this divine essence, essence, Jesus with his divine essence and his personhood as a humanity yeah. said that he had a God. Yes. yes. So both in essence and Oasis, he claimed that he had a God. Am I right? But that makes no sense. To you? <laughs> to That's in your Bible, by the way. doesn't make any sense to the terminology that I'm using. Did you use the terminology from the Bible or from outside the Bible? No, it comes from outside of the Bible. Thank you very much. Yeah. Can you stick to the Bible now? No. And answer the question. I Why am not? No, I am, right. Why not? So let me answer that question. Yes, please do. I am no more required to stick to the Bible in the self-definition of my faith than Hashim is required to stick solely to the Quran. When Hashim talks about Islam, he uses not just the Quran, but the hadiths and also Muslim commentators. Well, the church also provides commentary upon the Bible. And as a Christian, I'm fully entitled to reference that commentary in my understanding of the scriptures. Fair enough. It is not a double standard. Fair enough. The double standards which I mentioned is not whether you're using something from outside the Bible or inside the Bible. The double standards you're using is that you're saying that in his essence, he doesn't have a God. But you yourself just now admitted that this person has an essence and that essence is divine. Yes. Are you with me now? Yes. Good. So will you uh, respond to the question? Does Jesus in his essence as divine and as a person ever claim that he had a God? Yes. So you, ha you so, believe that Jesus had a God? So the, 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 exactly yes. my point. So yes, yes. The, the, the point, however, is not made, Hashim. Yes, which was? Because the scripture clearly teaches that there is only one God. Absolutely. And so every statement of the scripture has to be read and interpreted within that paradigm. The moment you deny that paradigm, you are not allowing the fullness of scripture to speak for itself. That is like me selectively picking some verses of the Quran and ignoring other ones to make a claim. Now, if I did that, Hashim would be on my back saying I am manipulating the text. I'm taking things out of context and I am doing it in a way that deforms the teachings of Islam. And he would insist that I allow the whole of the Quran and the Hadith to speak for themselves. This is again the double standards of the Islamic Dawah team who go along consistently reading from their little script that they've pulled up from some Dawah pamphlet and never from real study in which they do not allow the fullness of the scriptures to speak. The fullness of the scriptures speaks about one God. Therefore, every statement made must be interpreted through that means. And clearly, when Christ is referring to the Father as his God, he is calling him God, but this is not a denial of his own divinity. Because nor is it an affirmation of polytheism. Because Christ calls himself God in other parts of the Bible. I'm going to show you okay. and he also calls the father God as you've just referenced okay. so we have Christ calling himself God we have Christ calling the father God we have the Holy Spirit being clearly called God but we know there is only one God so we are forced to conclude that the father son and Holy Spirit are one God but you know Bob, so okay. how then do we talk about the difference Bob, you know, we talk him, one second we talk about the difference <laughs> We talk about the difference in terms of their personhood. Okay. The fact that they communicate to one another is a sign of their personhood. But the personhood, the personhood uh, is not devoid no, no, of the... And why I brought up the Quran, Hashim, is because you're working to a double standard. This is what I'm bringing up the Quran. I'm not trying to get off the topic. I'm trying to demonstrate that in Islam, you have a similar problem. No, we don't. It okay. says, no, okay. hold on, By the, way, the Quran no, will appear on the day of resurrection okay. Okay. in the form of a man. Exactly. In the form of what? Who will a bring man, the God. man. Not God. Remember Who that. will bring what the Quran is an eternal attribute of Allah. The Quran has been given the form of a book. Is it eternal? The book. Is it eternal? Can I answer? Is the Quran. Okay. First and foremost, I've noticed that Bob here is taking a lot of time in order to respond. I, 
I thought that this was this was like I asked him a question. He gives. It's because I get heckled and interrupted, Hashim. Hold on. Stop. Stop using it. We love it. We love it. Stop making excuses. What I'm saying is that I'm the one talking to you. When I talk to you, I talk for a limited time and then I stop. I give you the opportunity. And I do. But you, you seem how to go. Stop complaining and make your point. complaining, Hashim. You're just complaining. Every time you debate me, Hashim, you always do this. You took your dummy out of the pram. You throw your toys away. You stamp your feet and you suck your thumb. The point, what do you want to say? Okay, the point I would make is this. Do not preach, have a dialogue. I am having a dialogue. No, you're having, preaching here. Stop, Stop swapping, it. make your point. Okay, what point, point do you want to make? The point I want to make is this. Yeah. You earlier said that Jesus in his humanity had a God, but not in his essence. When I questioned that point, he said that no, he, it was his essence within that human being as well. So that essence, which was divine, and that human being, which was person, both of them, both of these qualities within that one second person of the Trinity, called Almighty God, the Father, God. Yes. Did, did anyone within the Trinity other than Jesus calls another member a God? For example, can you show me where the Holy Spirit calls the Father God? Okay. So, because only one member says he is my God. I go to my God and your God. And by the way, I can show you more examples. That wasn't the only example. I can show you many examples which clearly demonstrate that Jesus is not God. For example, him being killed by his own creation. This fully man, fully God died by his own creation if he was Almighty God. Secondly, this creation of God, or sorry, this Almighty God for you was ignorant of the hour. When he was asked about the last hour, what does he say? He says, no one knows the hour. Only stop interrupting, Soko. And what I'm saying is this: if if this was your Almighty God, then he shouldn't be ignorant of anything. He wouldn't say only the Father knows. You don't complain when you're heckling. By the way, remember, remember this. Remember this. He did not say. He did not say. I'll only God knows. In Mark 13:32, he says only the Father knows. Yes. He did not say the Holy Spirit knows or Jesus knows. Clearly, Jesus did not know because he says the Son doesn't know. So here we go. This is another example where both Jesus and the Holy Spirit do not know the hour and only the Father knows, unless you're telling me Jesus was telling lies when he was on earth, that only the Father knows. When it was all three of them, they knew it. So it wasn't only one example, which you keep saying that we only know one script and we learned it on some pamphlet and you, you call us all the other names or whatever you want to call. Look, look here, Bob, you don't want to fall to that standard of yours. Of, act, of basically condemning and condescending people here? I want to tell you, just answer the question I'm asking you. Jesus clearly demonstrated that he had a God. Show us where the Holy Spirit ever calls the Father God. In essence, I'm being fully man, I'm fully God. Now that is, that is, that is from the, Athanasius came up with that, the hypostatic union. Do you agree that that's extra biblical? Okay. Can you answer my question? That's a good question. Yeah. So, so the, the brother asked two questions. Firstly, he said, where in scripture is it found that the church has the right to interpret scripture? The simple answer to this question is just a historical fact. The church existed before the Bible, as we find it today as, in, as Christians. The New Testament was written by the church. The New Testament written, was written for the church and the New Testament was written about the church. If that is true, then obviously the community that birthed it about itself and to itself is the one that has the right to interpret it. That is a historical fact. The church therefore does not need or require any authority from scripture to interpret a book that it wrote to itself about itself. Can I, can I come back on that point? Can no, because I'm debating Hashim. Your second point was about Athanasius. As Christians, we don't deny, I have ever denied, that the church has been interpreting its text and has been writing about its beliefs. Muslims have been doing the same. Oh, does that make it right? So, if you'll stop heckling for a second, no, that would be great. That would be great. Heckling, heckling, heckling. Please note how the Islamic Dawah team behaves. The church has the right. He's not a Christian. The church has the right. The church has the right 
to speak about its own beliefs. And yes, I believe Athanasian had the right to write a creed. And because it was accepted by the church, it is acceptable to me. No, Hashim asked a question. It's fair, I answer it. He said, where did Jesus call himself God? No, no, I asked you where did the Holy Spirit No, no, no. Call the Father no, God. No, you did ask me I did ask, where I did, ask, did Jesus I call himself God. I'll show you. Where he claims to be God. God. I'll show you using Islamic divine names. Oh, I see. In Surah 24, Ayah 35, it says, and I quote, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. In John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus says, I am the light. Now, Hashim. Light of what? I am the light of the world. Only the world. Now, Only the world. Hashim, Remember, no heaven. according to your Quran, who is the light of the world? Okay. Answer me. Heaven. According to the Quran, who is the light of the world? Okay, by the way, Allah says in the Quran, it says here in Surah 435. Is that the one you quoted? Surah 2435. Oh, 24. Okay, let me go to that verse. So Jesus is only the God of the world. Remember this. In his time. Yes? By the way, according to the Bible, who is the Lord of the earth? The shaitan, the devil. Do you believe that, Bob? He is the Lord of this realm, yes. Okay, so he's the Lord of the world. Yes, and Jesus is the, is the light of the world. What is Allah? Allah is the God of the Shaitan. Allah is the God of the heavens and the earth. Now who's mightier? The Shaitan, who is the Lord of the world, or the one who is the, who is the light of the world, which is Jesus. And he, by the way, Jesus is also the curse of the world. He came as a curse for you. Yes? So do not compare Allah to Jesus. Trust me, that is like bringing a gun to a knife fight. <laughs> right. I'm any pretty more, good any with more? knives. Yeah, but I'm pretty good with a gun. I'm Trust pretty me. good with knives. <laughs> okay, go on. By the way, toy guns. Okay. So, so are you going to answer the question? Where in the Bible did the Holy Spirit ever call God the Father God? To my knowledge, the Holy Spirit never calls the Father God. But Jesus called the Father God. Yes. So what does that tell you? Who so, is the only member in the Trinity who calls somebody else a God? No, is, Hashim, your God? logic, your that logic, is logic, what your is logic is totally flawed. I'm using flawed, logic Hashim. if you understood. Your logic, logic is totally flawed. flawed. If you understood basic logic. Your knowledge. logic is totally okay, flawed. How is it flawed when your God calls your somebody else a God? Your logic is totally flawed. Explain how. So, <laughs> I'm going to explain how. You're making an argument from silence. An argument no, it's from not. silence it's not never an works. From silence. I'm sorry. It's not. Arguments from silence do not prove anything. The evidence of absence is not absent. Is not. Sorry, the absence, the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. We have evidence. This is considered standard logic God. in rhetoric and evidence. philosophy. I'm sorry, we do the have idea evidence. that the Holy Spirit never called the Father God somehow breaks up the Trinity is completely is illogical. God. You're making no. an argument from silence no, and it does God. not follow. The important thing is that no. Jesus is called the Father God. God. Hold on one it's second. Not an absence of evidence. It one is second. Evidence. One second. You know that is the bit he doesn't like, that's why he doesn't want to explain Absolutely, it. No, the bit I have John answered your question directly. Has I answered your question and directly. He goes and uses words which he knows do not make sense in this context when Jesus himself calls Almighty God God. Because God doesn't have a God, John. No, you my need friend, to understand this. My friend, you, you, you're totally wrong. God doesn't let's have a God. Just, I'm not let's wrong. just. Right. He used the idea. Notice, he didn't actually answer my question. Which one? I asked him, Which one? according to the Quran, yes. who is the light of the world? He didn't answer that. I did. The Quran was very clear. To? The Quran was very clear. Allah is the light of the world. Not the world only. But the Gospel of John, Jesus is very clear. He is the light of the world. He's also the Here's of the another world. comparison. In Surah 20, Ayah 114, it reads, High above all is Allah, the King and the Truth. However, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 15, starting from verse 14, And you keep the commandment without stain or reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which He will bring about at the proper time. He who is the blessed and the only sovereign, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Paul, through the Holy Spirit, 
is declaring that Jesus is King of Kings. That means he is the king of your kings. He is the king of whichever king you want to uplift. Okay. Allah is the only sovereign according to the Quran. Jesus is the only sovereign according to the Bible. Okay. So according to the Bible, Jesus is God. Thank you very much. Okay, let's see this what the Bible says, which you missed out clearly, is this. Jesus says in Acts chapter 3, verse 13, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the God of our fathers has raised his servant, Jesus. So your king of kings is a servant of my God. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the Bible, wait, wait, I haven't finished yet. Yeah, go on, go on, go on. And also Jesus go says, go and also Jesus says in chapter 5, verse 30, that I by myself can do nothing. Yes, this is another verse in the Bible where Jesus is nothing according to your own Bible. Shall I bring up more verses? Hold where Jesus, on. Wait, 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 you're you're preaching now, Hashim. Oh, no, I'm not. I only made two statements. I thought we were having a dialogue. Hold on, hold on. You made much more statements and you're now worried. No, I'm not worried. It's not worried. I just don't want to forget them all. I don't want to forget them all. I don't want to forget them all. Write it down then. Chris, you look worried. <laughs> he looks worried actually. Not okay. worried. By the way, Je just trying to he find already admitted to us that Jesus is the curse of the world. And Jesus, according to the Bible, oh, sorry, Shaitan or the Satan or the devil, yes, Lucifer, like you would know, so called, is actually the <laughs> God of the world. Is, now, by the way. is the God of the world. The Lord of the world. So your King of Kings is not the Lord of the world. <laughs> Who is the Lord of the world according to the Bible? Hello. The devil. Yes, the enemy of God has taken over. According to the Bible, taking over sovereignty of the world for some reason. Unless your Bible is lying, then saying he's not he's not actually the Lord of the world, but they still call him Lord of the world. Are you doing now, Hashim? And Jesus Are you doing now, Hashim? Are now. you doing now, yeah, Hashim? Go on, go on. So, got worried there. Hashim jumps around the Bible worse than a Jehovah's Witness. Every time you show him a verse that he finds difficult, he simply skips to another verse. No! He, he showed a verse showing that Jesus was a servant. Yes. He lost four times. I agree. Yes. But let me explain to him. Bigger, bigger hole. Because the Bible gives him an answer. Yes. And if he wasn't working from such a strict script, he might have actually engaged with it. The Bible, by the so, in Philippians chapter 2, yeah. verse 3, mm -hmm. do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, Regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also of the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Did not, yes. Right. but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant. So the Bible says that Christ had the equality of God, was in the form of God, but humbled himself as a servant. Emptied, emptied. So you quoting verses showing that Jesus was a servant doesn't disprove my faith. True. It only confirms it yeah. because it is the fullness of Scripture that has to be allowed to speak, not simply taking verses out of context like you are attempting to do. Now, Hadouken, thank you. Now, one second, sorry, one second. No, no, you one points. second. You made a number of points. Yes. I made two points. You made Actually, a number of points. He did not he's bring worried up. now. He's worried. He's worried. I'm going to show you where you're No, he's worried. Now, let's just find it. By the way, in, an empty God, he said, yeah? In Surah 57, Ayah 3, Allah takes on two names for himself, Al-Awal and al Akia. Oh. Again, apologies if I'm slaughtering in the Arabic. Al These al are, I am the first and the last. Jesus describes himself as the first and the last. How many different ways do you want me to show you, Hashim? Jesus called himself God, yes. your God. Why can you not accept the evidence? Sir, These wait. are clear statements You've got to deal with them. I want you to deal with them. I, I don't them want you to jump around to no, other verses. No, I will jump Jesus around to verses said, I don't worry. Jesus said, don't I am worry. the first I am. and I am the last. Yes. Ashim, sir, please. In the Quran, okay. Allah says, but, I am the first the way, and I am the last. Bob, yeah. Jesus is calling himself 
God. I heard you three times, man. Come on, stop repeating yourself. Okay. okay. Bob, Bob here said he emptied himself. So Jesus was an empty God or fully God? You're not answering my it's question. It's a cross Hashim. question, remember? Okay, so until Ashim starts answering my questions, yeah. at this point, I'm not going to answer any more of his. Okay. Answer my question, Hashim. Like he's worried now. Answer the question. You see, this is, this is, the, kind of, answer, this is the kind of conversation I wanted to have, where we ask a question and a response, you not give him five you didn't minutes answer. You didn't and give him five minutes. You didn't answer. Which one? Answer the question. Jesus says, I am the first. I am the last. Allah says, I am the first. I am the last. Yes, that was the second Address question, right? That point. That was the second point. I'm, I'm still with the first point that you made from Philippians. Philippians. Two. That is the one I'm addressing. You said Jesus emptied himself in the form of God. Yes, so he's yes. an empty God, right? No, not in this sense. So which emptying himself means what? It means it's talking about the qualities, removing those qualities that which would are? prevent him becoming human. No, no, which are the qualities that were removed so, from him? So. The, the qualities, it's a good question actually. Thank you. And it might address something that Hashim likes to quote and address all of these verses that show Christ's humanity. Please do. Notice he goes to verses that show that Christ had limited knowledge, that Christ needed to rest, that Christ needed to eat, and he uses them as proofs that Christ isn't God. When actually, all they are, are proofs that Christ took on the fullness of humanity. Now, for God to do this, he had to empty himself of something. Of what? He had to take off some of the properties of divinity. Which is? Such as not needing food, such as complete knowledge of all things. Okay. He took these things off. These do not make God God. They are like robes to God. They are like clothes to God. He takes them off. So you're telling and he me. And enters into humanity. So you're, you're telling me. I am. Let me finish. Oh, you're still answering. Let go me on, finish. Go on, go on. Yeah. But you're going to address my question. I will. I will. No problem at Thank all. Thank you. I will. In the same way that when H2O becomes ice or becomes gas or becomes liquid, yeah. it changes its form without changing its essence. Mm -hmm. Christ emptied himself of those things that would prevent him taking on the fullness of humanity and took on the fullness of humanity. It doesn't mean that he stopped being God. So this and God, this is not what the scripture so, so, is saying. So, so wait a minute, you're telling me that... He now has, address my second no, no, point. No, no, wait a minute. I'm, he doesn't want to address yes. the I am Bob, the first Bob, and the last statement. Do you remember the first question? Yes. Are you going to address... I will. No, I will. After, after this. I will, no, after I want this. you to address it now. Let me finish this point. Address it now, Hashim. I don't go according to you. Hashim. I don't go according to you. Hashim, you're not here to dictate this debate. That's fine. You're free that I will bring up this point which will destroy you. This will destroy you. You don't want to address the point. I, I, make, no, I, mean, I have already told you okay. I'm going to it. Okay. But I want this make to one be, more point. I then. want to make a point here. Yeah. You said he actually did not have these qualities. Where God Almighty, my Allah, doesn't need to eat. But he's saying his God has left this attribute where he doesn't need to eat. So now you have got one less attribute. Another attribute that was less than him is of knowledge. So he's not all knowledgeable. My God Almighty is all knowledgeable. His God wasn't all knowledgeable. That's why he claims that he's ignorant of the hour. But look, this same Paul, who is the one who wrote Philippians, I believe? Yes. Yes? Says what? In, in Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. And this is what he says. For Christ, for in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. Yes. Yes, Paul? Yes. Sorry, Bob. And this is what Paul says. Oh, for please. in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. Yes. And in Christ, you have been brought to fullness so either Paul is saying he's emptied himself or he's contradicting himself in another words where he's fully God in bodily form Hadouken to you both so, no that was very funny however what it does is it demonstrates why what the, the, as Chris, the, 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 the fundamental the premise of Hashim's <laughs> argument is based on the idea that divinity is connected to the attributes of God yeah. that it is the attributes of God that define what God is. No, they don't. The attributes of God only define how we experience God. They define a philosophical language with which we talk about God. They don't make what God is. The essence of God is not his attributes. The attributes flow from his essence. They are things that don't define his divinity. The fullness of divinity, the fullness of the essence, the oasis, entered into a union with a human nature. 
the attributes obviously became limited in doing so that's lo the logical outflowing of this position but i notice hashim even though promising he was going to address my point <laughs> hasn't done so i said i will has not done so I said now I will. after this point hashim, I will. The point no, wait one second, Hashim. Oh, wait you one second. The point now? One oh, second, oh, Hashim. By the way, Paul one is second, Hashim. Hashim. No, Hashim. The deity Hashim. lives in him. No, Hashim. This is a clear contradiction. No, Hashim. We will not fall for the word gymnastics no. which you have just done. I'm sorry, Unfortunately, Hashim. Unfortunately, you cannot hide anymore. You that have he's stated. He's either fully God or he's an empty you God. Have make up your mind. I am afraid. Because Paul couldn't make up his mind. I'm afraid. Unfortunately, 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 Hashim. Hashim is trying to base his argument on a premise that is false. Which is the Bible. His argument makes <laughs> only one sense. Only Thank makes you. sense if the, the, the what is being discussed by Paul yes. is understood that God is defined by his attributes. This premise I disagree with. You can't prove your premise, so it is a non-argument. So God is not defined no. by his attributes? No, So you're saying isn't. any Tom, Dick no. and Harry can so. come and say I'm God, so. and they're God. So. Wow, this is really great. Unfortunately, in the Bible, Hashem Jesus. isn't dealing with the fact what? that in Allah, Allah gives himself divine names. Come to that. Christ Nobody. claims those Nobody. divine no, names. Christ doesn't claim he them. Hasn't he hasn't even. I've claims. given you the evidence Hold on. very clearly I where Jesus it. calls himself the by the names Look, of your one God. Of the, one of the I'll give you another one. Uh, let me address that. No, I'll no, give no, you no, another you know one. What we do? I'll Fine. give you another one. The guy one. was trying to give him address the point, now he doesn't want me to address it. So, let's have a look. Just like Paul, you can't make up your mind either. <laughs> no, unfortunately, Hashim, Fully God, empty God, your characterizations mind. don't deal with the point that I'm making. Actually, it's not, it is a Bible you're trying I to jump. It wasn't my you're script. trying to jump it around a Bible. because you I'm are afraid to deal with the points that Look I am Bob, making. Now you have been cornered like so, Dizzy, so you want to move on. Carry on. By the way, do you want me to address uh, Alpha and Omega or not? Yes, please. Okay, please good. address that good. point. Because now we have moved on from the empty God or fully God. So we're moving on to the, uh, the point that I said I will come back to. By the way, Jesus, if he is the Alpha and Omega, then we have another being called Melchizedek, who said, I have no beginning of days, no end of life, no mother, no father, no genealogy. He is the likeness of the Son of God. Remember likeness of the son of god so bob if you're in the likeness of your daddy you are not your daddy you are in his likeness so anyone who claims that this is a pre jesus or pre uh what i forget the name I, you you probably know the terminology this is not jesus christ coming before his incarnation this is him saying that he is has no beginning of days no end of time so if you believe that Anyone who calls themselves the Alpha and Omega is God, then why do we not see Jesus believers or, or, or Christian believers or Christ, Christians ever worshipping the Melchizedek, the man of mystery, the man who had no mother, no father, no genealogy, no beginning of days and no end of time. This is in Hebrew chapter 7 verse 3, which later on he says he will send another in his place. Or something of that effect. I forget the exact words, but we can find out. Okay, so so Hashim didn't actually answer my question about Christ using oh, divine titles and calling himself God. Yeah. All he did is skip to another verse of the Bible yeah. to throw out his parrot fashion set of basic polemics. Yeah. And this is Hashim's style. I get that. He doesn't I like get the Bible that. for some reason. I get that. No, like the Bible. I will. I will address his point when he starts to address mine. I did understand. What I would like to uh, bring up here is yeah. yet another example, I'll show the example where of a Jesus and calls himself God. You want. So, in Surah 30, I think it's 31 actually. Mm -hmm. Let's go, 31, 30. Because Allah's name is not the servant. Jesus calls himself the servant. We've already addressed this point. No, you haven't. You, yeah. you said so, that he emptied yeah. himself. So, we addressed and I that point. The words so that he's fully he gone. is he is basically avoiding the fact of dealing with the fact that really. Jesus is like using the names of Allah very plainly to call himself God, or more rather, yeah. Allah is stealing the divine names of Jesus yeah. to no, no. call himself God, Allah never because himself the Allah is stealing the divine the names of Did Jesus he, no. to refer to Did himself. He empty God? Here's no. another one. Did he say he died Surah for my 31, no. Ayah 30. The, one of the names that is because the Allah the is the died. only truth. Is the only truth. Who's the only truth? Allah according to your Quran. <laughs> yes. So Jesus says in John 
14, verse 6, I am the way and the truth. So tell me, Hashim, yes. is Jesus the truth or is Allah the truth? Okay, when you say that, is Jesus the first and the last or is Allah the first and the last? Okay, first. Is Jesus the light of the world or is Allah the light of the world? Please address this point. I've already addressed them, but you don't like my answers, unfortunately. Oh, I've already said, if you want to believe Jesus is God, because he's the Alpha and Omega, then you should be consistent and not use double standards by worshipping Melchizedek as God, because he's better than Jesus. Jesus at least had a mother. Melchizedek had no mother, no father. Jesus, according to the Bible, had two genealogies. How many? Two genealogies. How many genealogies? Guess what? Melchizedek had none. Melchizedek had no beginning of days, no end of time. If that is not Alpha and Omega, I don't know what is. So Jesus, Melchizedek had better qualities, better attributes than that of Jesus. Are you going to worship him, Bob the Builder? Or you're going to say, no, you're, you're, you're basically avoiding my question. I'm not. I'm saying be consistent. If you're going to use this argument as your basis for worshipping Jesus okay, as God, then be consistent and so, worship Mel Melchizedek. Unfortunately, I can't take lectures in consistency from Hashim. <laughs> the man <laughs> creates <laughs> double <laughs> standards all the time. Like I have mean? asked him repeatedly to address the point yeah. about the divine names that Allah stole from Jesus <laughs> to call himself the light of the world, the first and the last, the resurrection, the truth, the king, the sovereign, all of these are the titles that Jesus uses to refer to himself very plainly and thus calling himself God. But unlike Hashim, I will address his point because I do address Hashim's point. Now, the last time we debated, I have to correct myself. I said that Melchizedek was a type of Christ. I went away and I looked into it more. I was wrong. Thank you for so admitting. I'm correcting myself. Good. The reference that Paul makes to Melchizedek is about the difference between Melchizedek as a priest and the Levitical priesthood. To enter into the Levitical priesthood, your chain, your, your family chain, both mother and father, were traced so that you could be proven to be of the tribe of Levi. Mm -hmm. The comparison that Paul is making is that Melchizedek had no chain of father or mother. And this is the reference that he's making without father or mother. No he's right. using the comparison poetically. He's using it in a way to show poetically the deity of Christ within the priesthood of Melchizedek. No. That he is a priest in the order of Melchizedek without father, without mother. This is what Paul is doing. You need to start picking up some books, Hashim. Start reading some real material. Now, again, I will ask you to deal with the fact that Jesus calls himself quite clearly, I am the light of the world. Jesus says, I am the first and the last. Jesus is described as the king and the sovereign. And Allah uses these titles. No, he doesn't. Address, he says, light of the world and the heavens, not only the world. Address the question. I did. Address the question. According to the Quran, who is the light of the world? According to the Quran, Allah is not a servant of anyone. According to the Quran, he's not addressing the question. According to the Quran, who is the light of the world? I will answer the way I want. Who is the light of the world? By the way, let me address the one he He doesn't want to answer the question. He doesn't want to answer the question. The question. Question. He's frightened to answer the question no, 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 no. because Stay Jesus. He he, no, me. the reason why he doesn't want to address my question loud, is because he has gone round like Speaker's yeah. Corner asking get Christians grip, again and again, on, where does down. Jesus call Bob, himself God? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I have yeah, given yeah, you yeah, very yeah, plainly yeah, yeah. from the Bible yeah. where yeah. Jesus calls himself yeah. your yeah. God, yeah. or more rather, oh, your God yeah. steals the divine titles of Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Deal with that I've point, already, Hashim. I've already answered the question. Unfortunately, you do not like my answer. Who's the light of the world according to the Quran? I will answer the way I want, not the way you want. Who's if you, the light of the world? I'm just asking you. Who's, why, why are you so angry? Who's the light of the world according to the Quran? Calm down. Who's the light of the world? Deep breath. Thank you. And calm down. I will. I'm very calm. Thank okay. you. Now my turn to answer. I've only had one cup of tea this morning. Well, you should go and get some more cup of tea yeah, or coffee. What are you? So go get so it. So he has He has He's not going to answer the question. He's not going to answer the question. What a guy. Okay, Hosea 7.3 says this, 
By the way, he uses poetic language. Remember the excuse he uses for, for, for Melchizedek. Why can't we use the same language and poetry for Jesus? Yes? Yes. But he wouldn't do that. According to your Bible, which he has an address, why is Jesus called the curse? Why is Jesus called the servant? Why is Jesus called an ignorant person who doesn't know the day of the hour of the last day? Why is Jesus a mortal who died by his own creation? This is nothing in comparison to my God, Allah, who is the almighty God, who never ever is a servant, never is ignorant. Allah says he's the all-knowing. He knows the hour, no one else knows. He knows the mystery of the soul. No one else knows this. He knows many things only Allah knows. Not even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Stop inter interrupting Soko. Soko, stop interrupting. Can you tell your Christian team, missionary team, to stop interrupting? All right, now this is what happens when they're desperate. They get angry like him. Not angry. They start complaining. Not angry. Every I just find it hypocritical that Hashim is accusing Bob. people of double standards. You, interrupted me, you, interrupted, me you interrupted me plenty. You interrupted me plenty. Hashim is creating a double standard and he doesn't want to answer the question. They haven't had enough tea. Hashim, Hashim, I've got 15 minutes. That's fine. You can go whenever you want, Bob. I'm not holding you against your wishes. So the important thing is this. If Jesus himself says, that he's a servant of God, then who are you to call him God? If Jesus himself said that he doesn't know the day of the hour and hence he's ignorant, who are you to say that he's almighty God who knows everything? These things are clearly, clearly the proof in the pudding which we say in English and this is what it is that Jesus has many attributes which show that he is a human being and not God. Show me one attribute of Allah that shows that he's a human being. Did Allah ever claim to be a human being? Absolutely not. So you cannot compare Allah to Jesus because then you will have statements like Jesus saying, I do not know anything. I, sorry, I by myself can do nothing. Yes, I'm a servant of God. I wash the feet of my disciples. Yes, Allah doesn't wash anyone's feet. And if you want to say this oh, is the Hashim. humbleness of God, so, of Jesus, then Hashim. yes, that is fine. He's Hashim. humble, but he's not God. Hashim makes yes. a point. Well, mate. This is the way the Islamic Dawah I team answer operates answer in Speaker's Corner. They make a big show and dance about Christians not answering the question, but when they're asked a question, they don't answer it. Which one did I not answer? Furthermore, they make a big show and dance about presenting something that is orthodox belief in Christianity as if they've discovered something that we didn't know. By pointing out that Christ had humanity, he proves nothing except that that is what I already believe. All of the verses that show Christ's humanity are exactly the verses that I would go to to show Christ's humanity. We Christians believe that the divine Logos became a man. That's what we believe. So to show me verses that demonstrate that humanity only proves what I believe. It doesn't, it isn't a counter argument. It doesn't a denial of the divinity. It says quite clearly in the Gospel of John, chapter one, verse one. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were made by him. The Quran states that all things were made by Allah. It says in John chapter one that the word became flesh and it names him very clearly in the chapter as Jesus Christ. So I have shown you clearly and you have shown me clearly that Christ has a divine nature, that is what I have shown to you. And you have shown clearly to me that Christ has a human nature. You have not proven that the human nature is a denial of the divine. Now, what I have shown to you is that Christ claims quite clearly by Quranic standards to be God. He calls himself the light of the world. Who is the light of the world according to the Quran? I'll answer for you because you don't want to answer. The Quran says Allah is the light of the world. Jesus says he is the light of the world. Allah says he is the first and the last. Jesus says 
He is the first and the last. Allah says, he is the truth. Jesus says, he is the truth. Allah says, he is the resurrection. Jesus says, he is the resurrection. Allah says, he is the sovereign. Paul, through the Holy Spirit, says Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I have shown you clearly evidence after evidence after evidence. Jesus calling himself God, the apostles calling himself God. Here's another one for you. Thomas declares that Jesus is my Lord and my God. By the way, the evidences what, are clear. What, what Hashim but, doesn't but want to deal with them. You're preaching now. Now, Hashim, what, what, one whoa, whoa, second. Wait, wait, you were speaking a while. No, you spoke more than me. You were speaking a while. Go and look at your camera. You were you you speaking a while, By the way, Hashim. Allah says he's Al-Hayyul Qayyum. He's the ever-living. Yes? Did Jesus ever say that he's the ever-living? No. I think yeah, actually I could find that. <laughs> You'll have to find that, yeah. yeah, yeah. If he was ever living, then he died at one point, which proves that he either did not die at all, or he's ever living. You can't have it both ways, Bob. Come on. You need to believe in the crucifixion. Otherwise, you wouldn't be a Christian. I do. You see, does crucifixion, now this is the key question. Let's see if he answers that. Does crucifixion ever, a crucifixion and resurrection ever apply to an immortal being? Okay. Are you going to answer that question? Yeah, of course I am. Good. So, way, see how little I spoke? No, no, no. Make a note so, of that. So, yeah. Hashim, Hashim, <laughs> it's important. It's important. He repeats himself. That's it's important. Fine. To point out that all of Hashim's questions are based upon false premises. Which is the Bible? The idea. The idea. I used only the Bible. The I no, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't. I did. You're interpreting the Bible. You're interpreting the Bible based upon your philosophy, and it is your philosophy that I am questioning. Christians do not believe. Hashim, do you notice you're interrupting? Yes. But you complain when you're. Are interrupted. Not interrupted. That's called a double standard. No, Christians okay, do not believe that death on the cross is the end of existence. Hashim's argument is the idea that in some way death on the cross contradicts the idea of continued existence. Christians don't believe any such thing. It says clearly in Peter that after the crucifixion, the soul of Christ Notice the heckling by the Islamic Dawah team. It's not heckling, it's information. By the way, I said he's this all the way through the debate. Now he's heckling again. Subscribe to Dawah Digital. Christians have always believed that what died on the cross was Christ's body. We have never ever believed, as the premise of the question assumes, that the crucifixion of Christ meant that the divine Logos ceased to exist. The problem is not what the Bible teaches, the problem is the philosophy that Hashim is using to interpret the Bible. He needs to correct his philosophy in accordance to what the fullness of scriptures teach. Can I respond? The fullness of scriptures teach that the soul of Christ Your descended into hell, into Your Hades. Into where? Hell. Into Hades. Wait, wait, where did you descend? Into Hades. Which is hell, right? No, no. Well, you said it! No. You said it! I, so what? People can misspeak. So what is Hades? So what, <laughs> what is Hades? What is Hades? It's a place where the dead are kept. Which? The souls of the dead the are kept. The souls of the dead? Yes. So, okay. so it's not hell? No, I don't think so. Okay. Subscribe so you believe? I don't think so. So you do believe that Jesus died? I believe his body died, yes. Okay, is the body... Is death equivalent to non-existence? I never said that. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. You, you, you presumed it. It's you, what did you say? You presumed it? Yes, you did. Where did I say yes, that? Yes, you did. Because... What? I'll explain. Okay. Let wait, me explain. Wait, 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 no, no, no. Wait, wait. You contrasted... Shoko, Shoko, do no, not. the reason why Hashim when did made I this point... That I'm going to exist. explain. I'm you, going to but demonstrate. You lied. You lied. No, no, it's not a You lie. said I said No, you contrasted the death of Jesus with eternal existence. So you assume you that death was an interruption to eternal no. do you existence. Do remember my question? And yes, I do. What was my question? Your question was, if Christ died on the cross. No. Yes. No, it wasn't. Yes, it you was. You should go home and watch the video yes, again. I'm going. Let me repeat it. No. If you forget, it's possible no, no, no. for you to forget. You're a Hashim, human being. I heard you. You can forget. I heard no, you. No, but you heard it wrong. I heard My you. question was very okay. clear. Repeat it. My question was repeat this. It. Does crucifixion. Guys, guys. Does, they're doing the live thing, yeah. Does crucifixion and resurrection apply to an immortal being? I never once said he ceased to exist. 
Please stop lying and putting words in my mouth. Bob, that is a bad hypothesis. What is the got. opposite of immortal? Mortal. Answer. And what happens to a mortal? He dies. Thank you. So you did compare it to death, the end <laughs> no, of existence, Jesus which died. is exactly the point that I was making to you. So Thank, you, you, so you. Thank you very much. You're saying, Thank you very much. Nothing. That is what you say. Stop shouting. You've just said no, it. No. Are you angry? You've just been I shouting know, in my ear. Don't know, talk to me about shouting. You're the one shouting. Don't talk to me about shouting. Did you just say? Did you just say death means cease to exist? So. Did you just say that? Death means no. to exist. You said You said it on camera. So, you said it. So I said that means. When did I say and that? What I said. When did I say that? What I said. When did I say that? What I said. Can you stop lying? You, what stop I said. Stop lying. Hashim, stop making false allegations. Touch. Stop making false oh, allegations. No. He's getting Hashim. angry now. So no. did you see that? Hashim. Did you see Hashim. that? He said Hashim. Hashim is working for a double standard. Stand. Will you stop making the false allegations against me? Of Islam. If you do not. Do not apologize, this will be the last discussion we're having. Hashim. Because you're making false allegations, you're lying against me. Hashim. I never once said that you, means cease to exist. You Why? compared he immortality to mortality and you said immortality that mortality. Is the of mortality. Yes, and what you're saying is, is that mortality is the end of existence. When did I say that? Are you implying that? How? Are you implying No, it? I'm not. So are you saying that someone can die and continue to exist? Someone can die and the soul can continue to exist. That's what Christians believe. But wait a minute. Thank you very much. Wait a minute. Thank you. Okay? That's what we believe. I never Thank said, you. I Thank never you. said you didn't believe that. Thank you. I did not say it. You're trying to but set up word trap. And your word <laughs> trap doesn't work. Wait a minute. You said. Thank you. You said. That I is what we believe. Case closed. Case closed. Close. You're done, Hashim. Hashim. You're, you're done. Hashim. Hashim. You're you're finished. finished. You said you're that finished. I was claiming. Oh. That's what we believe. Why are you a hobby? Why are you a hobby, donkey? Why are you a hobby? Why are you a hobby? Why are you Let's get easy, man. Question for most. I'm doing good. I'm being called crazy. By Uncle Jamal, Allah. the very definition Allah. of Allah. satire, the very definition, this man is calling me crazy, this man is calling me crazy, Bob, 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 thank you, you really have to listen to what I'm saying, you've proven my point, you, thank you, I never said that you proved my believe. point, I never said That's Christians do not yes you did, you tried to die. imply it, how, how do you mean I tried to imply it, you tried to set a you. logical trap no, and no, it sprung no, no. on you yes. and now you you're upset, why is Kate, because he knows this corner. When I said that no, body corner. of you I said the body of Jesus right? Christ. Oh, we agreed that when Jesus died, he continued to exist. Wait, yeah, are we agreed? Can I answer? Uh, yes. Can I answer the way I want? Are we agreed Jesus can I, continued can to exist? Can I answer the way I want? He's worried. He's, he's worried. worried. No, he doesn't want to answer the well, question. Making us yeah, yeah, yeah. First and foremost, he, 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 I never he, said he, that he, Christians he, do not believe when they die, they cease to exist. For you to allege that I did that, that is a false statement and you really have to apologize for that because you're lying and that is not the truth. The truth is this, if Jesus' body died, is that, does that mean that he's immortal or immortal? Christ was immortal. That was my question. No, no, hold on. Wait, when Hashim, when I ask Hashim, no, when I ask Hashim a question, he says, I will answer in my own way. But when I want to answer in my own way, Hashim says, no, you got to answer in the way I want. This is the double standards of the Islamic Dawah team. Hashim has agreed with me Is the body dead that the death not? of Christ yes. is not the end of existence and therefore and therefore and therefore it is not a contradiction it is not a contradiction it is not a contradiction to say that Christ was immortal so how is, he, how is he immortal when he died? Thank you. How is he immortal when he died? And this is my point. Which is? You're trying to make no, no. death the end of existence. I never said. So stop going backwards Wait, and forwards. You know when you die? Hold one listen, position. Listen. Are you mortal or immortal? You're mortal? dancing from your left you're foot panicking, to your right yeah. foot. Yeah. Yeah. Hold one position. Okay. Is death the is death the end of existence? No, yes it's or not. No? I've told you Thank the second you. time. So I Christ now will you answer was my question? immortal and death was not the end of Christ. Okay. Yes. Thank so, you. So by that argument, the Logos is divine. By that argument, by that argument, we all are immortal, right? No, <laughs> no, because we were created. What is that going to be immortal? It means we had a beginning. <laughs> an immortal. He doesn't, he doesn't an immortal. Okay, let's, let's define an immortal. What is immortal? Define immortal. An immortal. Define immortal. Well, immortal. Well, yeah, you're right, actually. Immortal yes. Immortal means without end. Can we speak no. Can we without speak end. Without end. This is true. Wait, without end. However, immortal. we're arguing about Christ's wait, wait, divinity. When you say immortal. We're arguing about Christ's Hold divinity. On, on. And my well, argument is that Christ had neither beginning nor end. Okay. 
I will define immortal. You tell me if I'm right or wrong. Well, immortal, like according Hashim. to the dictionary, Hashim. means someone who is not subject to death. Is that right? What can come before the first? Can what can come? What can come before the, the first? Ask a question first? with a question. Any oh, first. Seriously? The first. First of what? The first of everything. First of what? The first of everything. You mean God? Thank you. And does Jesus call himself the first? Can I, can, are you, are you going does to, Jesus wait, call himself you, the first? Why the red heavens? Answer the question. Why the red heavens? Does Jesus call himself the first? So does Melchizedek. Do, no, he doesn't. <laughs> yes. Be, no, he had no, no he beginning doesn't. of days. No he, no. he had no beginning of days. Melchizedek is an Old Testament figure. He never calls himself the first. No, he says he had no beginning Paul of days. Paul said he has no These beginning. These are the right headings you have to Paul deal with. Paul, Paul said it. Paul, 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 can you answer the question? Does can Christ the question? call himself the first? Can you answer the yes. question? Yes. Can anyone come before the That's first? With all due respect. No. Him, you'll get a chance. Jesus is okay. calling himself God. I know you ask the question. Yes. Was Jesus mortal? If he died, or was he immortal because Christ he was divine and had no beginning and no end? That wasn't my question. Is he immortal? I will answer your question how I choose to answer your okay, question. Okay, what is my question? Christ what was question? divine and had no beginning and no end. What was my question? He didn't have an end. What was my question? I'm hungry now. You're not answering my questions, Hashim. I don't need to answer your questions. What was my question? Oh, I don't. This is, this is what I call. I've already answered your question. No, 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 you haven't. No, you haven't. You are saying you said the body of Jesus doesn't want to answer the question. The reason he doesn't want to answer this question. So I'll ask everyone else. What can come before the first? Because he knows he's lost the debate. Nothing. Yes. So if Christ calls himself. Bob, the first, who is he calling himself? Okay, so Mike is the beginning of this. Can you have anything before can, the beginning of this? Can something come Can before anyone the have no beginning of this? Hashim, God? Hashim. Can anyone Hashim. other than Hashim. God have no beginning of this? You don't want to answer the questions. Hashim, Hashim wants to demand that people answer people questions, you questions you why you got mad. but he doesn't want question, to answer them. Okay, you know, this is fear. I, I think you have lost the debate. This is fear. No, 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 doesn't listen. Doesn't listen. Hashim. Hashim. Don't believe in a God. Don't believe in a God whose attributes separate from himself and become a man and then talk to himself. Bob, we asked him a question. No, just my question. Hashim doesn't like to answer questions. He only likes to ask them. Of Jesus Christ died. That is a fundamental question. We rattled him. We completely rattled him. So he just had quite an intense debate with Hashim a second round on the Trinity. Um, I think it exposed a lot of how the Islamic Dawah team worked to double standards. They demand answers to their questions in their way, but don't want to do the same. They demand answers to questions that they ask, but they don't want to answer questions. Hashim made a number of points, but he dances around the counterpoints that are made to him. He doesn't want to address the fact that the scriptures show both the divine and the human nature of Christ. The human nature of Christ is clearly evidenced, and Hashim used lots of verses to demonstrate that fact. As a Christian, I have no problem accepting that Christ was human. But what Hashim did, and what Hashim has to do, along with the Islamic Dawah team, is deal with those verses in scripture that clearly show Christ's divinity. And he didn't want to do that. All he wanted to do was to show more verses that showed that Christ was human. So he's not really addressing the entirety of scripture, only those parts of scripture that he wants to talk about. And that, unfortunately, is the Islamic Dawah team, backwards and forwards, in and out. Now, I thought that one of the key points that came out of that debate was one of Hashim's characteristic tricks was to say that if God is immortal or eternal, that he can't die. Now, death is not the end of existence in the Christian understanding. And the divine attribute is that you don't have a beginning and that you don't have an end. And he tried to ask a question to pres which presumed that Christ had some kind of end in the sense of ceasing to exist. However, he then went on to explain, or got caught out, 
that that isn't the case and that actually Christ dying on the cross isn't an end of existence, which is what Christians believe. If Christ didn't have a beginning and didn't have an end, this makes him divine. And Christ uses many of the divine titles that we find Allah using in the Quran. Allah has stolen those divine titles. Christ describes himself as the first and the last. Well, no one can come before the first and no one can, can come after the last. If Christ describes himself as the first and the last, then this means that he is God. Another example of the kind of contradiction that Christians are uh, uh, often trapped by is that Muslims say, well, if the Father is full of God and the Son is full of God and the Holy Spirit is full of God, well, that's three gods, not one God. But yet, Muslims uh, insist upon a division when they make this kind of argument, but are not consistent. Because if I have a Has Quran, a Wash Quran, and a Duri Quran, I have three different Qurans. But Muslims will insist until their dying breath that that's actually only one. So they, in their belief, have plurality and division, yet deny that, that similar forms of plurality and division can exist within Christian belief. And this is a double standard. I think what we've seen today in quite a a robust and confrontational argument in which my voice started to go um, and I was becoming a bit tired to be, say, to be fair. Hashim exposed himself as working to a script that is based upon a presumed philosophy with which he's reading certain texts of the Bible and it's those premises, that philosophy that he's interpreting the Bible by that is flawed and hopefully I've tried to expose some of those false premises. The Islamic Dawah team is giving out misinformation. Christians need to learn their faith, they need to learn it well in its historical context to counter the claims of the Islamic Dawah team. I don't know if you were there at the beginning, but I was showing that in the hadiths, um, there's a hadith that shows that the, the Quran intercedes on the behalf of believers to Allah. Well, if it's interceding on behalf of the, 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 the believers to Allah, then that means one of these attributes has now in some way separated itself from Allah to talk to Allah, which is, which is, a, 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 yeah, which is a corruption of, of the Islamic doctrine of Tawheed, you know? And, and he felt uncomfortable when I was on that. I, I, and why did, we, why did we push the point more then? Well, sure because we'd agreed actually that we were going to talk about the Trinity. Oh, okay. And I was using that as a counterpoint to demonstrate that there was hypocrisy within the Islamic polemic that Christ spoke to the Father. Because if Christ spoke to the Father, and somehow that proves that Christ isn't God, then when the Quran, which is one of the divine attributes of Allah, speaks to Allah, that means it's no longer a divine attribute of Allah. And if it's no longer a divine attribute of Allah, that means that Taweed has been broken, the oneness of Allah has been broken. And there, there's a contradiction within the, the, the Islamic sources. It's got the same logical structure yeah. as the, but, what they but, object to in Christianity. But they only apply saying. their logic to the yeah. Christian faith. They never actually no. take that same logic, reverse it and apply it to the Islamic faith. You know, so there, there's a contradiction there. Did you record this? Excellent. You could maybe put this on as a summary. Yeah. Um, you know. Did you cut all of that? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, guys, I gotta go. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Nice chat with you. You have a great day, bro. Peace be with you. Yeah. And remember, guys, keep dig deep into the faith. Dig deep. Yeah. And don't be frightened to stand up for yourselves and work as a team and support one another. All right. God bless. Take care.